Hello everyone, in this video, we will discuss step 8, pre-tune the PID controller via the ziegler nicholas method. Regarding the ziegler nicholas method, this is a very famous method using in practice. To check out the detail of this method, we can go to the Google and search this. So from this menu, it's just 15 pages, it's very useful, it named tuning for PID controllers. So as a PID controller, the key parameter we need to tune, that is a gain, integral, and the derivative of parameters. Okay, from this table, it gives us a concepts what the basic role of this gain, integral, and the derivative of parameters, how they works, what the effects of those three parameters. When we do the fine tuning test or commissioning, uh, we can follow this direction to increase or decrease the parameters and then to see what the behavior of the process. However, if we start from the scratch, we are doing the commissioning on a totally brand new system. So we do need a, a initial parameters for these three parameters, right? And uh, we need uh, these three parameters to basically make the system, make this PID loop can control the system. And then based on the performance, we can tune the gain integral and uh, derivative these three parameters. This comes up one question. Is there some way we can uh, calculate one initial group parameters? So this will talk about ziegler nicholas method. This page introduced the ziegler nicholas tuning rule. And in this menu, it introduced the two methods. I will prefer use the second method. So the first method is called S-shaped. So the idea is we need to measure the L and the T here. However, if you walk on side, you will know because most of the process value has a noise inside. It's hard to accurately measure the L and the T here. So using the method one, it's hard to accurately calculate the T and the L to get the PID three parameters. So that's why I will prefer to use the second method. According to this manual, the second method we will use this way. So we will begin with a lower or zero value of the gain and then increase the PID gain, the parameter gradually till the system got this uh, oscillation here. At that moment, we need to measure the period of PCR, this two peak time, and the record this uh, PCR, this value, and the unit of this uh, PCR that is a second. And other than this, we also need to record the gain value at this moment. That is a KCR. So we record that time what the actual value on K and what the actual value on this period. And then let's follow this chart, this equation. Uh, let's calculate the gain integral and uh, derivative parameters. And if we work on site, sometimes your process cannot do this oscillation. For example, for the temperature of for the pressure system. So that's why I used a couple videos before to introduce if you have the model of the process and you can use this simulated model as your process, as your controlled object. And then you can tune this uh, KP, uh, increases K from the smaller value to a value when the system guides this uh, uh, steady state oscillation. So without any uh, impact for your system, actual system. So that's the beauty of we are using the simulated object. Or if you have to connect the actual process without using the simulated object, so you can still gradually increase this K. And if your system cannot get this oscillation, I mean, the system physically cannot this uh, oscillation, uh, you can estimate basically what the big value at that moment the K will cause this uh, system get this uh, steady state oscillation and uh, estimate this uh, PCR and the KP. And we will use this uh, KCR and the PCR to calculate the PID parameters. After all, those PID parameters will be used as the initial PID parameters. We will still fine tune them when we uh, doing the online test and doing the long-term commissioning. That's why sometimes the estimated KP and the PCR still workable. Okay, so I will use this uh, second method, Nikola Ziegler's tuning second method to tune my system. 
And finally, I will find this uh, KCR and the PCR for my system. Okay, let's go to the TI portal. In this project, I'm using one second as a cyclic time of this uh, PID controller. So I'm using the this uh, cyclic uh, interrupt 100 milliseconds to call this uh, PID underscore compact this uh, function block. So the cycle time of this uh, OB30, I set a uh, 100 milliseconds. Other than this, we also need to go to this configuration. And go to the sample time of the PID algorithm. So this is sample time of the PID algorithm. I set uh, one second here. And those PID parameter, just uh, an initial parameters setting here. To implement the Nicholas Ziegler method, so if we recall the second method of the Ziegler Nicholas tuning method, firstly we need to give a small gain value and gradually increase this again till the system got this uh, oscillation like this. At that moment, we need to record the KCR and the PCR value. Let me shift to my system, go to the HMI. Firstly, to allow this PID controller run the KP gain only, I need to give the zero on this derivative. Set a zero. And for the integral, I will set a very big value. Basically, this big value will eliminate the integral in facts. And uh, to allow this uh, KP works, and uh, keep in mind for this uh, proportion action weighting, I will set a uh, one. Okay, so after this set, so this is sample time of the PID algorithm that is a uh, one second, and the PID control mode that is auto. Firstly, let's give a small value and uh, gradually increase this uh, KP. Firstly, let's set a uh, 50. And then change a new set point. That set point still near the operating point of your system. Just need to give a new set point and let the system adjust the process by itself. Keep in mind, currently the PID is working under the automatic mode. So as we can see, this output will not change too much, but uh, this gradually decrease. So that means this gain is not big enough. So let's increase this gain because we need to increase this gain till the system got a oscillation there. So let's increase this uh, KP to 80. Okay. So this is the first time and this is the second time when it's the oscillation here. But this output still ramping down like this. That means this game is still not big enough. So let me increase, go to 140. As we can see, when the gain is working at this uh, 140, so the output under the automatic control, this output gets a uh, oscillation here. But we can see the amplitude become uh, higher and higher. So I shrink to 130. So after I change to 130, we can see that is uh, ramping down. So that means this KCR, this value could be either around 130 to 135. So this KCR could be this value. After running for a while, we can see when the gain is setting as a 130. So this amplitude on the output, uh, this amplitude, they are the same. So this KCR could be the 130, this value. In the meantime, let me go to this uh, commissioning wheel. Because this commission wheel, we can use this uh, ruler to measure the value. So let's change to one second sample time and here is a start. Let this window to record this curve. And let's hit this 100%. Uh, the green curve, that is a process value. 
and the right curve that is a control signal. All of them, they are getting the oscillation here. So we can use this 130 as our key CR value. For your system, you need to increase your gain till your system gets this oscillation like this. So record that time what the gain value it is. So we can stop this curve and uh, we can record uh, K and uh, this period. And uh, firstly, let's record the gain value. That is a 130. Okay, so this KCR that is a 130. And then let's go back to here and uh, use this tool to measure the period between these two peaks. Okay, so this delta time that is a uh, 0 0.1671. Let's record this. This need to time is 60 because the unit of the PCR that is a second. And let's calculate. That is a 10 seconds. According to this uh, Ziegler Nicholas second method, to calculate the PID parameter, we will use this chart. So that KP and the TI and the TD we will calculate by this equation here. So at least here, with this equation, we will calculate the KP, TI, and the TD. All right, so based on the Ziegler Nicholas method, we calculate this uh, set of value. KP, TI, TD. Let's type in those value. Those value will be used as our PID parameter. And here, the KP, we will type in 78. And uh, this TI, that is a 5 second. And this TD, that is a 1.25. And then I will return this uh, proportion action weighting, go back to 0 0.2. This weighting and uh, coefficient will be only work for the setting point. Okay, after we change this uh, PID three parameters, we will see this feedback and this uh, control data process is approaching our setting point. And now the system, this PID control loop is controlled by these uh, three parameters by the automatic PID controller. Now we can see this process value is reaching the set point. It looks very nice based on these parameters. And keep in mind, by the calculation way based on the second Nicholas Douglas method, so the system would have a little bit overshoot to guarantee the settle time could be shorter. If your system is sensitive for this overshoot, you can go further, fine tune the PID parameters. So let's go back to this uh, online trend. We will see the specific value of the process and uh, control signals. This is the trace curve from the PI portal, uh, which is built in inside the PID controller. Okay, currently the process reached our setting point. So let's set a new set point, set a 50. And let's see this uh, transition. From the right side, we can see there is a little bit of overshoot there. But the value is really small. It looks nice. So we can see there's a little bit overshoot here. So we can optimize this uh, PID parameters and fine tune a little bit. Okay, the system reached to this uh, stable status. Let's set a new value, 55. This is a setting point. This is a process feedback. Now this uh, rising time reached that uh, status. As we can see, this uh, rising time used around uh, half seconds. 
and there's no overshoot on this process. It shows a very good performance based on these parameters. If we record this uh, falling transition comparing with a uh, rising transition, this falling transition it has a uh, overshoot here and has a uh, two times oxidation here. So we can decrease the gain. Also, we can decrease the integral this uh, in facts here. So let's decrease the gain from 78 to 70 and increase the Ti from 5 to 8.5. Okay, so let's test again, set 55. This rising up transition shows a very good performance. We can see there's no overshoot and the rising time is very short. So let's wait a couple of seconds and then let's give a 50 set point. Okay, so let's give a 50. So let's compare this second time. So this time shows very beautiful. We based on the ziegler nicholas method and fine tune a little bit. So we can see this time both the rising and the decrease this two transition time. It shows no any overshoot. It shows very good performance here compared to the previous time. Before we have an overshoot and a couple of times settling here. To optimize this, we decrease a little bit on the gain and the increase this uh, integral time here to decrease this uh, integration in facts. All right, as we can see, using this uh, ziegler nicholas second method, we run the PID in auto and increase the gain till the system gets an uh, oscillation. And at that time, we record the gain and the KCR and the PCR value. And after this, we use this chart to calculate the Kp, Ti, and the Td. And after this, type in this value into our PID controller. And from this actual test, we will see this value are running very good. Basically, we just need to do a little bit of fine tuning, and this process got a very good performance. All right, that is a thickler Nicholas method to get the initial PID parameters. In the next video, I will show how can we fine tune, use the system automatic fine tune method to fine tune the PID parameters. This automatic fine tune comes from the TI Portal software and this uh, PID compact, this built in automatic fine tune method. See you in the next video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.